and let's start. Okay, uh, we're not going to do a full lecture and whatever else. We're going to give you a little bit of extra time to um, get through things. Um, so I believe Ray has um, put up some details or whatever else already in the forums um, so that you have some extra time to respond. What we're going to effectively do is take your answers and mark those um, on how well you've done, what you've done on the forums, etc., cetera, um, how well you've interacted and solved all the problems, uh, but predominantly uh, how well you do on the uh, sort of combination, but also the last exercise. So we're going to have a look at your answers. So if you want to be in the running, what you need to do is get everything off to the people at um, IT Masters, and they can anonymize them and send it back to us for marking, and we can give a number for a student ID and say who's good, bad, or indifferent, uh, and let you know. From there, the other things we will do is, um, uh, of course, uh, get a certificate and uh, uh, send some um, cards and things down to um, uh, the people at IT Masters who will then figure out how to distribute to you guys for whoever's won a card, who are the best people in the, the class. Um, now, um, so one of the things I'm going to uh, have a bit of a chat is how SSH and, and Access work on, on these sorts of servers. Now, um, nice little site here, good to have a bit of a look at. This is um, the SSS keychain bit, so creating a key, etc., uh, and doing a login. Uh, nothing particularly uh, difficult or, or special, but for those who haven't, there's a nice little how-to. So when you're looking at uh, jumping between servers, uh, which we haven't opened everything up directly so that you can jump between all the nodes, uh, although we've said where they are. Uh, what we have, where are we? I just, oops. Let's jump to a server. So what you end up with, um, We've got a few ranges here, as we've said, uh, as well as 10 machines and all that sort of uh, gumph and, and all the rest. Uh, when you're creating a, um, a sort of cluster box or whatever else, um, one of the best tools to do this, in my opinion, is Rocks Cluster. So the Rocks distribution here. So for these who want to um, try your own, I, I recommend Rocks. I'm a CentOS fan, in case you haven't guessed. Uh, CentOS, Red Hat, etc. Rocks is really distributed based on CentOS. So um, the other one I'd recommend is Scientific Linux. Now, uh, this is also a CentOS derivative. Now, ROX is probably the simplest way of getting started in making your own cluster. So if you want to have a bit of a play, um, one thing you could actually even do is uh, run up just a few low-end cheap machines. It works out best if they're about the same. Uh, it's actually quite difficult to make a cluster Oh, based on a whole lot of different architectures, different memory, different everything else. Um, a lot of the difficulty we've been having at with some of our machines has come from the fact that we have both Supermicro and SGI uh, and a number of other related bits, including some HPs, uh, that all try and merge together. Now... When you're doing the access nodes, that's not too difficult. Actually getting that shared becomes more difficult than it should be. So um, what you'll see here is a nice little how-to and a configuration getting started. Now, 
the first thing I would recommend is get yourself some cheap machines. Um, you're not going to get a particularly fast supercomputer uh, if you build it with Raspberry Pis, but you can actually get one that would, uh, well, have in one occasion gotten to the top 500. We're talking 15 years ago. If you get 100 uh, Pis and put them together, it would actually do it. Now, at the same time, Um, if you're not caring about speed, hypervisor would probably work. You could you could do that. Uh, we actually use uh, a combination of. We've been using Zen. We'll probably end up going to VMware uh, because we don't have enough staff and um, there are better management tools. But a hypervisor would allow you to create a whole lot of shared machines. Uh, might actually simplify some of the connectivity issues uh, between the cluster if you could make all the uh, the different cluster areas the same um, yet to experiment with with some of that but um, uh, from what I've been playing with at the moment uh, VMware could potentially with um, some of their tools and you can see that down the bottom if, I don't know if you can see the bottom on the clean screen here but uh, I've been playing with VMware as well as Zen at the moment just to um, see if we can get something going that way um, Amazon EC2 instances as a cluster. There are some that are out there that have been used. Um, there are a number of cluster as a service companies now springing up based on Amazon. Um, if you're doing a little bit of testing, it's not too bad. I mean, if you're only doing ad hoc testing, it actually works out effectively uh, from a price point of view. If you want something running all the time, the Amazon Web Service Cloud becomes a little bit expensive very quickly. Um, one of the reasons we didn't go with Amazon and sort of made our own was the fact that um, if you want to run a lot of tests for a lot of time and store a lot of data, then it becomes very expensive. In the back end of our system, we have uh, oh, about 120 petabytes worth of storage, a uh, combination of fast and and um, and archive storage there, archive being everyday disks like um, SATA and um, other type RAID arrays, the fast stuff being the, um, the flash memory, which gets very expensive very quickly. Um, but yes, you could actually do an Amazon test. Uh, running up and getting a bit of experience on this stuff uh, InfiniBand is a bit more expensive. I guess you could probably find some older cards, especially if you're looking at only 10 gig. Uh, with the release of the 100 gig uh, InfiniBand, you'll probably find that the 40 gig InfiniBand becomes a bit cheaper this year. And so that would allow you to have a bit of a play and test and everything like this. <clears throat> Rocks is actually very simple to get going. There are some pluses and minuses on it. Um, it doesn't necessarily integrate as well as I'd like across all different types of machines. Um, getting some of the things like um, the Intel configuration tools working as well as I'd like and having security tools to lock things down correctly is uh, probably a bit of a difficult issue. Um, it's been a learning curve even for myself. Uh, in doing this course, we've had to try it. I've got to unlock some of the different areas already um, as we've been hearing people um, say I can't get to uh, on the forums I've had to try and re well reduce security so to speak security being part availability means to have security we need to have people access things of course we don't want you to do too much that's all the fun of doing this sort of thing and um, we don't have enough people to manage uh, I think it's 3.9 thousand servers all up and instances properly without automating a lot of it and that means um, reducing the amount of time per system etc etc and hoping that uh, everything goes well. Now what you see here is uh, what we've been talking about what you've accessed is the front end nodes there uh, predominantly so uh, when you're looking at configuring these, the back end are these other ones that uh, 
I can access. Um, I'm being naughty here, and um, as you can see, I'm, I'm logged in as root, which I don't recommend. Um, it's uh, not a not something you want to do. It allows you though to um, get to many different machines. Oh, haven't connected to that one before. There we go. Uh, so needs to be a little larger. Can I get that? Okay, now we get the session on here. Having Skype pop up at the same time. Um, okay, so anyway. Uh, don't worry about seeing the entire screen. Unfortunately, I've got a big screen, so that doesn't um, sort of help. Um, so there we go. Found one that I haven't logged into before. Uh, there are many, many different um, uh, sort of systems, and when you're running these, generally what you will have is, as we've got the SSH here, we would set a key gen between each of them. So Nick in the office did our scripting for that for us. Um, basically the idea was uh, that allowed us to force a whole lot of keys between all different machines. So for each user, whether it's root or uh, etc. Uh, yeah, my screen res is actually massive. Uh, I do apologize if that, that is a problem for anyone. Um, I'm sitting here on my sort of main workstation, which uh, Ray's smiling because I've got, um, well, two 4K monitors, two normal monitors, and whatever else. Uh, why does everything have to come up on the screen? So, yes, massive stuff. So, protocol generation. What we're doing here is just making it so that you're trusted between machines. So you save a, a key, it gets saved between areas, and it allows you to log in. Now, it does, it means you don't need a password, but this is one of the problems with opening this up. Once you do this, you need to have separate keys and everything managed per user. And uh, if you're opening that up rather than assigning it to um, like the MPI or uh, actual group login to allow you to log in, then you can log into anything as that machine. Um, I'm not really quite sure how we'll open that up to other parties like yourself to be able to go through different machines, etc., or if we even can. Uh, there's got to be ways, etc., to to do this stuff. Uh, we're still learning. We may have big HPCs here, but uh, uh, there's not a lot written about security of HPCs, strangely enough. So uh, we can do all this, and we can bring them up, and we can play with R and, and all these sort of things, uh, which is what I'm, I'm recommending for you to go off and do yourselves. Now, uh, we have one of the classes here um, that chew up a lot of memory is the neural network package. So we can see that uh, we have an example here in the neural network package um, NNNet or NNet and predict. These allow us to both grab some deep learning. If people haven't um, looked at deep learning before, I'd recommend have a bit of a search on deep learning. Uh, they, they also do prediction packages. Now, what we have, so you've got different methods. This is Cox method here. Um, gives us some data to spit out. And if you've already played, you would have seen that um, you can do these sort of things in the workspace. Um, one of the areas we 
do a lot of work on uh, is around the block space, so uh, blockchain space. So Iggy, for instance, would um, use this. He Iggy's one of our researchers from University of New South Wales when he's not doing um, um, silly stuff like protein folding. Uh, for them, he works looking at um, analysis of network analysis or graph analysis or whatever else on the blockchain. So that's what we do, as you have heard. So what we basically would like you to do in the um, um, coming week is start putting together your labs. So uh, start running everything, start playing, uh, start getting everything together and documented. Uh, I've got to open up a couple more packages I've noticed from the, the forums and make sure that they're all accessible, which I will make sure I do. Um, now, basically, the way I'm going to mark this is 20% uh, 20, 20 uh, across most of the labs apart from number four, which we're going to do the majority of the marks for. Uh, interaction from the forum from another 20%. So the first three are weighted a bit less. Uh, that email. Uh, then from there, we're going to also get you to do bonus points to see who wins. And I want someone to come up with a example neural net model you can do anything you want so as my um, apart from what we've got in the labs if you want to really distinguish yourself go out there uh, look at some areas like the link I'm about to put up and think about writing your own neural network for whatever you want Find a training data set. I don't care if it's one of the existing ones like the IRIS data sets or the um, handwriting data sets that are incorporated into R. Pull them down and have a bit of a look. If anyone's interested, um, I can help map the uh, blockchain data, etc. If you wanted to have a bit of a play on that, uh, might have to do that individually if someone wanted to. Uh, because that goes off to the Postgres databases and everything like that, so I'd have to um, play with it. But from there, put together something and put together a single document to send off to James and the others at IT Masters, and then we'll we'll um, we'll put those together and mark them. So we're not going to give you the answers for everything yet, because well, that would help you. Uh, solve everything before we actually mark you but once at next week uh, so next Wednesday at this time we will load up the answers um, maybe on, I don't know where they want to load them um, where would you guys at IT masters like do you want it on uh, YouTube fine or I'm getting a thumbs up behind me for YouTube Hi Craig, YouTube's fine, or we can also upload it um, ourselves. We could do both if you want. Yeah, that that would probably work. I'll sort this out with you after the webinar ends. Yep, great. Um, it's going to be a bit of a shorter one anyway, but um, so we'll be ending soon. Uh, mm -hmm. So what I'll what we'll do is we'll put them up on YouTube and also get you a copy. Um, you want to make it close a business next uh, Eastern Standard Time for our submissions? say five o'clock next Wednesday. Sorry, is that to me or? Yep, that's to you. Um, yep, that should be fine. Okay, so we'll do five o'clock as the um, uh, the closing time for this. If you can get a, uh, we don't really care, Word document or whatever else. Mm -hmm. uh, 26, is it? All right, well, week after next then. All right, so. Um, Ray's put the 26th, he's being generous with you, so then we'll have those not loaded next week, but the week after. What do we put on YouTube? Uh, no, we will put on YouTube, 
the answers at the 26th. Um, I'm getting it wrong. I, I was giving you a week, but um, Ray and the others uh, want to be a bit generous and make sure you've got two weeks to answer everything. So uh, two weeks. So what we I'll, I'll do the percentages that we're going to mark you with this afternoon and put that on the forum, uh, what the four different things are, and also the task. And the task, uh, second part of the task, is have a look at a neural network model in R. You choose, I don't really care. Do a little bit of R coding, as well as the other stuff, and um, pull that together. So, do I have any more queries for the moment? So yeah, the links and tasks will be um, put up this afternoon, so you'll have that there. And the percentages for an answer. Now, um, for those who do actually uh, get the top positions, uh, I guess we'll arrange to freight out some uh, FI cards to the guys at IT Masters and they can do the distribution from there. Uh, that work out well with you guys? Yes, Craig, that's fine. Great. Uh, so that way they can send it out to you. Um, marking, of course, um, if people are happy, we'd, we'd be happy to share results. But uh, uh, yes, the MPDs, a firewalling and whatever else issue, unfortunately. Um, permissions, so there's a combination between um, uh, name D and other things so I'm going to have to open that one up <sighs> yes rich I'm sorry but uh, it's um, a learning exercise in opening these things slowly and trying to get the minimal amount of trust but also allowing it to be used it's uh, interesting there's not, not a lot of um, how-to guidelines for HPCs and, and whatever else. It's been been quite interesting um, opening this up because previously it's only um, uh, only internal. So when you're looking at an internal um, server where you can trust inverted commas or your staff uh, and have uh, control over what people are doing, well, to an extent, I mean, you hope you trust them. <laughs> Um, it's a big difference to opening things to the outside world. No, it, it is. HPCs are shared resources, that's correct, uh, but not many people seem to document much about it. They're very bespoke, and unfortunately, unlike um, the Ansido guys or whatever else, we don't have a couple hundred people uh, to tie down these machines. So we're, we're a lot smaller in people size than many of these other organizations, which um, sort of adds to the, the fun. If we had an extra 50 people here just to monitor things, um, our life would be much simpler. But uh, anyway, all right. So that's really what we're going to cover for the moment. Um, I'd like you to have a bit of a read on um, uh, the SSH how-tos. And um, also the neural network packages. We'll send some links through this afternoon. And I will get um, up on the forum some percentages and tasks. And um, that's really it. And from there, what we'll be doing is loading in two weeks' time the answers. And of course, once we've loaded the answers, uh, it's too late and you can't get a solution to us. But um, the forums will still be up, of course. So. Um, we'll be monitoring things and any um, sort of security lockdown concerns we have will be um, rectified in the time. And um, that's really it. Thank you, everyone, for coming along. It's been a good little four weeks. It's been a learning exercise for ourselves as well uh, in the opening up of everything. Uh, who should we email our solutions to? I think the best place would be to get them off to um, IT Masters and they can pull everything together and um, uh, anonymize everything 
as well. Yep, um, you can send that to admin, A-D-M-I-N, at itmasters.edu.au. Okay. Um, you can do the Fortran ones as, uh, uh, if you like. The, the main ones we're going to mark you on are the C ones, though. Okay. <laughs> yes, um, that's the other thing. Uh, if anyone wants to send through a proposal to the guys at um, uh, IT Masters, uh, yeah, Lab 2 is optional. If you want to send through a proposal for any uh, research work, we are not just open, but we're encouraging. So we'd, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to, uh, to know what you'd like to test, like, like to do, what you want to get access to. Uh, Etc. and um, go from there. All right, so that's it for the moment. Uh, back to the forums and back to practice and playing and all that sort of fun stuff. And um, thanks for your time and attention. And um, from here, I guess what we'll try and do next is we'll try and um, number 15, well done. Well, thank you, Rich. Uh, actually wanted a bit higher, but the NSA bloody um, came in with two new servers. I don't know what the hell they're doing, but... <laughs> ah, John. Okay, I'm not sure why you're rich then. All right, well, <laughs> thank you, John, who's coming up as Asked Rich, but all right. So, thank you, guys, and I'll stop 